Hello, my name is Nathan Dillis, and this is my video for IPCV2 about content-aware image resizing, or seam carving. Here's a quick demo of how seam carving works in my implementation. In this demo, I'm changing the size of these two windows by dragging the corner of one of them. However, the one on the right and the one on the left are changing sizes in slightly different ways. We'll be seeing more of this later. Normally, there are lots of different ways of resizing an image, what imaging scientists call interpolation. There are two main types of interpolation, one where you're making the image bigger and one where you're making it smaller. For each of these, there are two ways that you can do this. The main one is called nearest neighbor interpolation, and there's another more common one which is called bilinear interpolation. For each of these methods, when you're making the image bigger, you sort of spread the pixels apart that already exist and then extrapolate the ones in the middle based on what you already know. So the nearest neighbor method just takes the pixel that's nearest and copies that value over. However, this can give you some sort of blocky artifacts. For bilinear interpolation, after you spread those pixels apart and you're extrapolating, you average the ones that are nearest it in a linear fashion. This gives much better image quality overall. Now, back to the title of this presentation. There's a way of resizing an image that takes into account the content that's actually in the image, and that's called seam carving, or content-aware image resizing. With content-aware image resizing, we don't care about keeping all of the pixels in our resizing algorithm. We just want to keep the ones that have the most content. So you might be asking yourself, how do we tell which pixels have the most content? And that's actually pretty easy. There's a, in image processing, there's this operator called a gradient, and it shows where the edges, or the, sometimes you can think of it as the energy in an image. That's gonna be the metric we use to determine what pixels are important and which ones aren't. Then we're just gonna remove one section of the ones that aren't. Here you can see one scene like that that's marked out to be removed. All right, here's an example of how we actually generate the scenes. So before we start, one thing you need to know is that Images are made up of pixel values at discrete locations. And so here's a grid that represents a 5x5 five five image. And here are the values that make it up. Right here. So we're going to pretend that this image is the result of the gradient operator from our previous step. And so in order to make up a vertical scene, we're going to go look in the first row right here. And then we're going to find the minimum location. And so for our purposes, that's this 11. And it's marked in red here. Once we find that minimum location, we're going to look at the next row down, the, the three values that are closest to that 11. And then we're going to take the minimum of those. And so that's marked in red here as the 22. After we find that location, we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to look at the three closest locations and find the minimum. And so that's 13. And we're going to keep on repeating this process until we build up one scene that's connected throughout the whole image. And so that's going to be our result for that one step. Now from here, we want to change the size of the image. So in order to make the image smaller, we just take out these red squares. And we're left with this image, which just has all of those squares taken out. You can see that in the first row, we took out 11, so we go straight from 20 to 25. In the second row, we take out the 21, so we go straight from 30 to 22, and so on and so forth for the entire image. If we want to increase the size of the image by 1, we're just going to take this scene and we're going to double it. So in this case, I've taken those boxes and just copied them right next to one another so that the entire size of the image is one greater in the row dimension. Sorry, in the column dimension. Now that we have this building block of a scene, we can make multiple scenes both in the vertical and horizontal directions and get a bigger or smaller image in both directions. What's playing on the screen now is an example of how the seams look as they're being generated. In this example, lots of seams have already been put onto this image, so it looks almost white. But if you look closely at this frame, you can see as the, each seam gets added to the image. One of the things I did for this project was create an application which you can use to resize the images using seam carving and regular resizing in real time and see the difference. Here's some examples of that. One thing to note is that the way this application works is it actually pre-computes all of these images. So here's an image I took of the Golden Gate Bridge and how it works in the live resizing algorithm.
The reason why this algorithm pre-computes everything is that pre-compution can actually take a pretty long time, almost three to four minutes for each of these images, which are about 500 to 600 pixels on a side. Here's a last example, which is of a face. Faces prevent unique challenges to the seam car carving algorithm, and you can see a lot more artifacts as we do this, mostly because people understand the shape of a face and its proportions much better than we do the shapes of objects that we aren't immediately familiar with. There are several optimizations to the seam carving process that I haven't implemented here. One major one is attracting or repelling seams from a certain area. Like I talked about in the seam example with the face, in a larger area with a region that you want to protect, like a face or a person that may not have a lot of fine detail, you can actually go into the energy image and label that area as a protected area. And to do that, you just label it as the maximum value of that data type. In contrast, you can also choose to destroy an area for another reason. For example, you could target an area that you wanted to remove completely from an image and set it to the minimum value of that area. That would attract all the seams that pass near it to run directly through it and remove all the pixels in that area. There are commercial tools that already do this process, so if you're interested in trying it out for yourself, I believe the latest version of Photoshop has a version of this built right in. If you're interested in learning any more about this, here are some references and all the attributions of the images that I've used throughout this presentation. Thank you very much for your time.